Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Vinny's Vittles. This week we're going to be making two very simple recipes. When I was a kid growing up, we used to go to New Orleans all the time, and one of my favorite treats from New Orleans was a big muffalata. Man, it is in a, a sandwich that is just the best thing that I've ever eaten my whole life. And we're going to try to recreate those today on Vinny's Vittles. And we're also going to make a great summertime dessert, homemade ice cream. I love homemade ice cream, but it's a lot of work, I thought. I found a recipe on Pinterest for a three-ingredient homemade ice cream, and we're going to make that right today. I want to start with the homemade ice cream because it's going to take the longest to prepare. So let me tell you about it. Three simple ingredients, a can of evaporated milk, a can of condensed milk, and a two-liter bottle of your favorite soda. We're going to use Dr. Pepper today. Now, we tested this out at the lake last weekend, and we used root beer, so it was kind of like a root beer float. Man, it was so good. But we're going to try Dr. Pepper this week because a lot of folks in the family love some DP. So we're going to be doing that. Now, we're going to post the recipe that we got from Pinterest in the description box so you'll be able to see it and look at it there. So let's get started. Now, you have to add the soda first because they can be kind of fizzy. And if you try to add it, after you added the other ingredients, it's a mess. So we're gonna add the soda first. And Dr. Pepper's pretty foamy, so you need to pour it kind of slow. Because it'll make a big mess if you don't. Now I'm gonna be using a you know an electric ice cream maker. If you got one of them old school ones that's got the crank on it like what we have when I was a kid, it's a lot more work. These electric ones make it a lot more easy. But you don't have to use a specific ice cream maker to put this together. It's going to be good either way. All right, so now we've added the Dr. Pepper. Now it's time to add the other two ingredients. We're going to start with the evaporated milk. And we're just going to pour it in. And it's complicated, so watch close. That was tough. Now let's add the condensed milk. Now this stuff is thicker, so it takes a little bit longer for it to pour. And when I was a kid, I used to have to sit on the ice cream churner, and my cousins and uncles would turn the crank when I sat on it. Y'all probably don't remember them kind of days, but you might. But that used to be fun. I can't sit on it anymore. All right, so we've added the condensed milk, we've added the evaporated milk, and the Dr. Pepper. Now all we got to do is close it up, put the ice on it. All right, so now we got it all in there and mixed together. We're just going to set it down in the ice cream maker. Just like that. Then you're going to add ice. And what I like to do is to add the ice and add the rock salt. Just like we used to do when we were kids. Alright, so we got the first layer of ice in. Now we're just going to put a ring of the rock salt around it. And then add some more ice. Now we've got our ice added. We're going to put one more good layer of rock salt on top. I'm just going to go all the way around the ice and lock it into place. Now once I get all the ice in there and I get it locked in, when I plug it up, it's loud. But I like to take a towel and kind of wrap around the top to keep it insulated. Now you got to be careful. Make sure you don't cover up your vent hose because you don't want your machine to overheat. All right, now all that's put together, we took it out of the room so we could plug it up and let it run without all that noise going on. Now, after you get through with it, now my ice cream maker stops when it gets finished. So you'll know when it's finished from that. Now there's a couple of different ways you can serve it. If you're gonna eat it right then, you can just take the lid off and start serving it. It might be a little soupy, but if you like yours to firm up, just take the whole container and stick it in the freezer and let it sit there for a little while. It'll firm up and then it's a lot easier to serve if you like it that way. It just depends on how you want to do it. All right, guys, now let's get on to making the muffalatas. Now, like I said, when I was a kid in New Orleans, I used to love to get these. We'd go to the Sugar Bowl every year when I was a teenager. And, man, it was one of my favorite things, going to the cafe to get the beignets and the coffee in the mornings and the muffalatas in the afternoon. Oh, man. But I'm going to try to recreate it today. Now, what I did is I went to Walmart and I got a pack of the ciabatta buns and that's what I'm going to use to make it with today. Now, we're going to take the ciabatta buns and we're going to cut them, okay? And then we're going to just lay them in here. Well, they might be cut a little bit already. 
we'll just finish them off. That'll make it easy. All right, so we're going to lay the bottom in and get to the next one. And we're just going to make a whole pan full of them, okay? All right, so what we did, we just took the bottoms and we put them in the bottom of the pan. Now we're going to add our olive oil and Italian seasoning mixture to the bread. We're just going to kind of spoon it on there and spread it. Now we've added our olive oil and Italian seasoning mixture. Now what we did is we just took um, one tablespoon of our favorite Italian season. We used Mrs. Dash and then we added two tablespoons of olive oil and just kind of combined it together. Now it's time to add our meats. We're going to be using a salami and a smoked ham. So we're just going to lay it on there nice and thick. I like a lot of meat on my sandwich. I'm just using packaged sandwich meats from Land of Lakes. They have an Italian combo kind of thing. It's got three different meats in it, and that's what I'm using today. But you can go to your deli and have this fresh meat cut if you'd like to do that. This was just a little more convenient, and at the time, I needed to get it quick. The secret ingredient is a muffalata olive salad. Now, I buy this at Costco. But if you don't have a Costco in your area or a place that sells like an olive salad like this, you can make it yourself. And I'm going to put a recipe in the description box so you can get it if you don't have it where you can buy it like this. Now we're going to take this and we're going to add a generous portion of this. Now this has got olives and, and black olives, green olives, the pimento out of it also. And we're just going to spread that on top. And then after we do that, we'll add the cheese to it, and that's going to top it off. All right, so now we've added our olive salad. We're going to use provolone cheese, and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to layer it across the top. And we've added our provolone cheese. Now we're just going to put the tops back on them be ready to go in the oven and bake with one last touch we got to add. Now that we have it covered, we're going to add some more of the olive oil and uh, Italian seasoning mixture to the top. Now we've got it added. Boy, look at that. Mmm, smells delicious. So in the oven, 325, just long enough to melt the cheese and get it all sealed up together. Now they've come out of the oven and they're smelling incredible. Now you just want to take your knife, because like I said, I laid the meat all across there. And you just want to cut down the middle. Make sure that you separate them. And cut down the center. In between each one. Now we're going to scoop one out. Look at that. Ooh, that looks good. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. Now it's time for the tasting. I'm kind of anxious. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. Man, that's delicious. Love the texture, love the flavor. It's so rich and juicy and fantastic. I know you're gonna love it. Now that's lunch. We'll be back in a few seconds to show you that dessert. Man, I just got to eat one of them muffled off sandwiches. It was so good. Now the finishing touches. Dr. Pepper homemade ice cream. Let's see how it tastes. Wow. Tastes a lot like Dr. Pepper float. That's good stuff. Now, I think I like the root beer the best, but the Dr. Pepper, pretty good. You guys be sure to give it a try. Hey, if you like what you saw today, be sure to subscribe to Vinny's Vittles. Share it with everybody you know. Put it on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever social media you use. Tell everybody about Vinny's Vittles. You're going to love it. Have a great day. We'll see you next time on Vinny's Vittles. Bye now.